It's personal. As today, we return back to MSM Talent, a talent agency, not a VTuber agency, who at one time was representing over 40 indie VTubers. That now seemingly no longer being the case. MSM's public talent roster over the past four days dropping from 40 then to 30 talents, hours later then dropping to 19 and later down to 15 until MSM went ahead and closed their talent roster page. Instead, only leaving the message of please email info at msm.gg for roster information. The MSM Twitch team also originally hosting dozens of VTubers having now been cleared out of talent and then altogether removed from twitch.tv. This automated portion of their website now saying proudly representing zero creativity charged individuals. Also stating connecting with an audience of over 41 million across various platforms that number never adding up as even at its height of 40 talents, those talents still garnered an impressive 17 million followers and subscribers on various platforms. And this now bringing us back to Seth, self-described as a manager man and fun guy, and who also operates as the CEO of MSM. This individual, the main subject of a video that we posted on May 16th, in which it was revealed that Seth had been actively blacklisting for over a year and a half various talents of mythic talent, 3AM talent, and yours truly. Making this a very personal story. Other screenshots coming out after that video, including Seth here in early 2022 saying, I'm just waiting for someone to go too far. I am really, really sadistic myself. I'm not gonna lie. I would get off on ruining someone's life, which is terrifying to both admit and accept, but hey, I knew I was a sociopath a while ago. Six months later also stating, still I want names because I have already decided what I want to be. I'm the black baller for the industry. Meaning once again, even two years ago, the CEO of MSM Talent had intentions to blacklist individuals within the industry. Also, after the posting of our video on May 16th, 46 hours later, Seth himself would provide a five minute long video reply to our video stating, sorry guys, running off of two days of barely any sleep from all of this going on. Tried to put together a response, but please remember I'm not an influencer and not used to public speaking. This all coming years after Seth having his own YouTube and Twitch channels, along with even hosting an MSM management podcast, intending to talk about such subjects as growth strategy, social media, brand collab, and artist etiquette. And now for Seth's response. There are accusations going around by a few individuals in our community aimed at me. Generally, it is my policy not publicly address rumors within the industry, but in this instance, it's now going beyond rumors, affecting not just me, but it's also affecting my family and MSM talent. So I'd like to clarify some major points. Seth then immediately skipping over this slide, reading due to this relating to a number of people's personal information, there will only be so much I'm able to directly comment on. My intention is not to speak on behalf of others and their own situations, but instead address points brought up in the video made by False ID. And to clarify, things VTubers say in our May 16th video made very certain, only to ever address Seth, never once mentioning a single talent related to MSM or any of their staff. This has only ever been about their CEO. Our Maryland LLC has been in the process of correcting its status with the state when our CPA passed away suddenly. This has been the source of a number of delays and we've had to get assistance from a new tax and legal professional. The process has been restarted with the new tax professionals for months. This relating to the fact that MSM talent under Mad Scientist Media LLC within the state of Maryland where they are registered has been listed as a business not in good standing. This is due to never filing taxes and the forfeiture of the business under Maryland occurring all the way back on October 15th of 2021, well before numerous talents of those 40 talents were ever signed on to MSM talent. For months, none of this has impacted talents payments. As talents have always received any money they're owed, this has never affected our ability to work with sponsors. Seth stating this has never impacted talent payments, but not addressing potential mispayments for staff and most especially contracted and freelance artists. Some of these artists, after the release of this video being immediately paid into the thousands of dollars, but things VTubers say, finding out within the last 48 hours that MSM talent does still at this time, has a major financial debt to one of their former talents. MSM talent being a business in forfeiture, also meaning that it's 
contracts could never be properly enforced against its talents, a fact that would affect the ability to work with sponsors if these sponsors were made aware of this. In terms of a blacklist, there is no blacklist. As managers, we will always keep track of potential bad actors and often warn talent, but we do not actively prevent talent from interacting with anyone. If our talent choose to collab with others, those decisions are made on their own. Since blacklisting actions haven't been enacted for over a year and a half now, preventing not only opportunities, but even breaking friendships. These actions even derailing business plans, as was revealed by VTuber Talent after the release of this statement by Seth. Claims have been made stating that there were two entities being used for MSM, both Mad Scientist Media LLC and MSM Talent. They are the same entity. There's only been one Maryland entity for MSM. And with that, Seth has now admitted to a crime, confirming that Mad Scientist Media LLC and MSM Talent are one and the same, this being a business in forfeiture, and breaking a Maryland statute, stating any person that transacts business in the name or for the account of a limited liability company, knowing that its right to do business in Maryland has been forfeited and has not been reinstated, is guilty of a misdemeanor and on conviction is subject to a fine of not more than $500. Grinding Coffee Co. was a black and queer owned business. I was not in charge of this business, nor was I the majority owner. We rebranded due to the majority owner not being able to be more intimately involved, so we changed the branding. I can't get into the specifics for privacy's sake of those involved. Nonetheless, I'm on good terms with everyone from the coffee company. This coffee company now running under the name of Based Coffee at Based Coffee GG. In terms of the other LLCs mentioned, these were utilized when I was serving as an independent contractor at a number of different businesses to protect myself. These LLCs are in forfeiture because I genuinely did not make use of them beyond what they were originally created for. After this, there was no reason to maintain the LLCs. Seth, once again, not only being just the creator and owner of the forfeited Mad Scientist Media LLC, but others such as Quick Press LLC, alongside Idea Hackers LLC. Those two also, once again, being in forfeiture at that same date as Mad Scientist Media back from October 15th of 2021. But also Spite Engine, self-described as a VTuber design guild and quote unquote, cooking up a 2024 relaunch. This particular business having numerous issues with payments to artists. This also all while Seth is associated with glitchless.gg, which still actively hosts numerous VTuber storefronts. That domain itself also registered under Perfect Presence LLC. There have been claims that I endorse the doxing of individuals and specifically that I would make threats to dox individuals. This is a ridiculous and completely untrue statement. As a talent representative, I do not endorse doxing and actively work to prevent doxing of many VTubers and other community figures, as I believe it is a safety risk. This all coming after allegations that Seth had been informing talents within MSM that former VTuber friends outside of MSM were doxing them on image boards. Seth at the time claiming that he had direct contacts to moderators on these image boards. This denial of Seth also flying in the face of other allegations that came out after VTubers outside of MSM claiming that personal information given to MSM during an interview had later shown up on image boards. The VTuber in this instance saying I gave personal information to one person for an industry thing. This being identifying and personal information, I was told I had to share it for an industry event. Once again, I gave this to one person. It was posted online quite some time after, but it gave me confirmation on exactly where it was coming from. In terms of the tweet shown from 2016, I was a 21 year old and at the time I thought it was something that was acceptable, when for many obvious reasons, it was not. The posts were made out of what was then an attempt at overly cringe humor, which does not reflect on how I feel about anything. These tweets from Seth using terms that to many are considered outright slurs or joking about assault. The Discord messages stating I would get off on ruining someone's life, along with I'm the black baller for the industry, having been more recent from 2022. As for the Facebook account, my personal account has been hacked and relates to a situation completely separate from my current work. It's unrelated, but also a consequence of past mistakes, which I've been working to grow and improve from as an individual and as a business owner. That being once again, the Mad Scientist Media Facebook page, Seth before representing VTubers, having worked with comedians and potentially one of those individuals 
individuals taking over the Facebook page to say, My name is Seth, and I'm great at taking people's money under false expectations. Giving the locations of I Will F You Over, Hell, Michigan, and the website of scamartist.com. As far as the court date, this is a personal matter that has nothing to do with MSM and its finances. The personal matter had been something I was not fully aware of because I was moving, but has been promptly resolved with the collection company. That payment being made the same day as Seth's reply on May 18th, two days after the publishing of our video. Seth stating he was not aware that he was a defendant in a court case against a credit company, with Seth failing to appear in court twice, once on February 2nd and the second time on May 3rd. This court case now having since been closed. In regard to False's statement around claims against him, as a talent representative, I always have to have the best interest of my talent at heart, which will at times mean being the guard that has to give warnings to people who wish to interact with them. It often makes me a bad guy to others. Ultimately, my goal is simply to protect my talent. Seth now here confirming full-on defamation against me, never once offering any explanation as to why or how that could be remotely responsible as a CEO of a talent agency. MSM creators have the ability to leave at any time with no repercussions. As far as it's been communicated to us, talent have enjoyed working with MSM, and we've done everything we can to rectify any issues brought to us, and we will continue to support them where we can. Ultimately, our talent satisfaction is our top priority. MSM creators having the ability to leave at any time, being abundantly clear as their contracts could never be enforced due to the business being in forfeiture. MSM at this time also featuring no active talent roster, and within the last 24 hours, further allegations against Seth stating that talents had to both pay for services that were supposed to be rendered by MSM and that Seth himself had been actively signing contracts for talents instead of the talents themselves signing the contracts. I've been seeing this all unfold, knowing that the thing that makes this as bad as it is are my past mistakes. I'm seeing my colleagues, friends, and talents harmed and caused unnecessary stress and fear. It's exhausting. I'm exhausted. I've worked for the past three years with our goal to build a place for talent to grow and accomplish their dreams, and we will continue to do so. We will continue to help this industry in any way that we can. Asmund Gold was right. I was a hustler, working my ass off, trying to accomplish something and making a metric ton of mistakes along the way. But what we've built over the past three years is an amazingly talented team of staff that have molded MSM into the well-run talent management company it is today. I've learned from my past mistakes and have channeled that work ethic into this project. We've worked hard to ensure that the careers of everyone involved in MSM can grow. Thank you for listening to my side. Once again, that being Seth, the CEO of MSM Talent, within that message confirming a misdemeanor and also defamation alongside ownership of both forfeited and active LLCs, and today proudly representing over zero creativity charged individuals. Further today, we also have Idol, a VTuber production company, now officially being acquired by Brave Group. These two entities originally collaborating back in December of 2023 on a merchandise basis. Brave Group heading up numerous VTuber agencies such as V4 Mirai, Vispo, and Globy. As here now we have the official announcement from the Idol VTuber agency. Reading Dear Fans, three years ago, Idol was founded with minimal resources and a vision to support talents and maintain transparency with our community. Over the years, as we have grown and expanded our talent roster, maintaining the same level of support and operational efficiency has become increasingly challenging. To address these challenges and continue our mission, we are excited to announce that Idol has been acquired by Brave Group US. This strategic move will allow us to continue supporting our talents with more resources and operational efficiency. Brave Group US shares our passion for VTubing and is committed to our original vision. Together we believe we can elevate Idol to new heights. Talents will have the option to continue with Brave Group under the new structure or to become indies with their existing characters and social media accounts. Brave Group and Idol are aware of past operational issues and are dedicated to resolving them and preventing future occurrences. We will provide a clear timeline for the delivery of all previously unshipped merchandise. Any items that cannot be shipped will be refunded. Additionally, if any freelancer has issues with an open invoice prior to the acquisition, please reach out directly to payments at idlecompany.com. We understand that this is a significant change, and we appreciate your patience and continued support as we navigate this exciting new chapter. Please look forward to a follow-up statement in the coming weeks with more detailed information. Sincerely, Idol. Brave Group making this press statement. The subheader reading, integrating Idol into Brave Group US, bringing the total of talents to 26, and then further in the statement, reading, bringing the number of international projects to six, including Idol, with a total of 56 talents under the group's umbrella as of August 1st, 2024. This all while the CEO 
of Idol is now stepping down. Providing this thank you and this message, reading I'd like to announce that I will be stepping down as CEO of Idol and passing the wand to Brave Group. It feels surreal to say goodbye to something that's been such a big part of my life, but it's time for a new chapter for both Idol and me. When I founded Idol, it was all about giving amazing creators the spotlight they deserve and challenging what VTuber agencies should be. Looking back, I'm amazed at how far we've come and I'm grateful for every moment. I wish the best of luck to Brave Group and I'm genuinely excited about what this means for Idol. They're just as passionate and committed to taking our original vision to the next level and I trust them to lead Idol into a promising future. To everyone who's been part of the journey, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support during the highs and lows kept us going. As I move on, I take with me not just memories but invaluable experiences and lessons that I will cherish forever. I can't wait to see how Idol grows and evolves. Here's to new beginnings, continued success, and maybe our paths crossing again someday. This bringing out numerous salutes from VTubers within Idol, including that from Enya, Lisa, and even Momo. Tanya reacting with, it was a short time, but thank you for letting me make memories with wonderful people. Fuyo stating, thank you for giving Fuyo a chance to exist. These past two years were full of ups and downs, but I will cherish the friends and the good moments forever in my heart. Juna further responding, thank you for helping me find my dear friends. That is who was also reacting was Rosa Nagashi, a VTuber and freelance mixer and musician who had recently come forward, illustrating how Idol had not been paying freelancers for their work. Rosa seeing this news and saying, while I was hoping for more details on what was going to happen to improve the internal state of Idol, this could definitely be a step in the right direction. Giving the talents away out of their own IP is a fantastic choice. Hope everyone can make the decision right for them. And in response to the CEO's letter, saying, sadly, not much accountability taken from his side, but stepping down is definitely the right decision for the future of the people working at and for Idol. And it at least shows some kind of responsibility. Hope the ship is in better hands now. Rosa then later also posting, actually, you know what? I don't need to be professional. As one of the individuals heading up Idol at this time is their talent manager, Lanny. Lanny. This talent manager taking time within one of their VTubers chats to say merch past issues will be addressed in the coming days. Announcement to come for further details. Regarding past Donathons, Brave Team has also agreed to fulfill those going forward. The talent manager on Discord also bringing back the ticketing system, saying due to recent developments, there is an option to send me a direct ticket. Going forward, I'll be answering queries to the best of my ability. Please understand that there are some questions that I just cannot answer, but if it's something I can reasonably find out for you all, I will do my best. Top things that I can say right now. Number one, I cannot speak on any contractual or decisions made by talents. This will be covered in a future announcement coming soon. Number two, changes in the Discord. There will be some restructuring to start rebuilding the community channels as well as to allow each of the talents to better engage with you all in the Discord. Some of you have already seen this with members' channels. Number three, when will we know more? Soon. Due to some important points being finalized, I am unable to give an exact date. I apologize for that. I appreciate the community and the continued support you have for the talents. Thank you for your patience as always. This talent manager making themselves available for both Discord and email messages. As now we check in with the Shadow CEO of Idol, and of course being Ren Penrose. This royal prince saying, what a time to be alive, and going on to address numerous questions in regards to Brave Group acquiring Idol. Ren on stream defining who is Brave Group, that the VTubers within Idol have been given an option to either stay or take their intellectual property and channels with them as an indie. Ren confirming still looking forward to a 3D model that's not expecting any graduations next week, stating that this acquisition for Idol means more money and faster projects, further confirming that Idol will not be shutting down, alongside confirmation that Idol EN Gen 3 is still on its way. Brave Group will continue to take care of merchandise. VTubers that stay within Idol will still be able to collab with those that leave. And in Ren's view, there is no expectations that any of the VTubers will quit VTubing, whether they stay or leave, along with not expecting any change in content. Ren finally saying that Idol might have been closed if this acquisition had not happened, and to expect the same idol, but faster. This also now bringing us over to Fluffin, formerly Pochi Wanmaru of Idol, taking to Twitter to say expected, but still extremely disappointed. To those who proceed forward, I wish them the best, and I hope everyone has a better experience than I had, now that they are being handed to another entity. I'm happier where I am currently personally. I'm going to clear some things briefly because I have been enduring slander behind the scenes this entire time. I am the one who paid for my second model at the time in full. I got a second model because the first design
line was rushed. The artist was slow to respond, and we were running out of time. I ended up going for a similar concept as suggested to me, with a different twist, to not copy the first artist's design. As you know, I had my own issues going on internally and disappeared for a while before my graduation. It was never my intention for things to happen the way they did. I was feeling a lot of negative emotions. No hiatus notice was put out despite my requesting one several times to at least let the fans know. This made me particularly sad seeing a lot of people leaving thinking I hated them or abandoned them. I have fond memories and I don't regret the time I spent with the people that once cared for me. My move donathon funds were held from me at the time despite me trying my best to figure out a way to complete my goals. The talks were poorly handled and only aggravated my situation. My departure was sudden and painful and I wish I had been strong enough to say a proper goodbye. I think I made the right decision in leaving otherwise because the way my finances were handled felt very disrespectful and stressful and was the last straw for me. I am thankful that we at least came to an agreement. I have since been paid the partial amount agreed. I want to clarify, Donathon payouts were never the full amount seen in the streams for any Donathon as a percent was taken. It is public information that people often forget. Everything I have and that I am able to do now is thanks to my community's generosity. I've worked hard and tried to succeed like everyone else. I encourage people to reach out to me directly if they have any questions. I have no intentions to bring back my old IP. That is back with Idol. We have Lisa tweeting, change is inevitable, but that's the joy of life. Keep on keeping on, sheeple. Big hug. And you're stating change is scary, so when in doubt, make sure you have a cute girl to hug and tell you it'll be okay. That is, we also have Ruby Runehart of Idol ES has released a brand new cover, that being of Outer Science. This is all while V4 Mariah is busy this weekend, hosting not one, not two, not three, but four 3D debuts, running from Saturday, August 3rd at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, all the way to Sunday morning at 1 a.m. Pacific, 4 a.m. Eastern. Oh, while Globy's cheerful cow puppeteer, Alicia, made this statement, I hate ads, let's nuke them. Saying further, starting today, all the live streams will be ad-free. I totally did not annoy management until they agreed. I mean, I totally did not hold them at gunpoint. I mean, no more ads on streams. Let's be honest, we are surrounded by ads everywhere. Let me at least make watching YouTube a little bit nicer. And let's be honest, if you have multiple ads during a five-hour stream, you kind of want to punch your screen. I hope you like the news. As for the long, we have Hall Live English's Shiori Novella tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, debuting in 3D. Hall Live Production English showing the hashtag Advent Takeover, creating artwork of Hollow Advent's trip in Japan. The members here seen signing the studio wall and asking, Bibu, can you reach? Kosiki Biju responding, I signed the wall at the highest spot, actually, providing this proof. As also with Hollow Advent, we have Fuwamoko. Now we're releasing their very own first anniversary celebration merchandise, including a happy puppy, happy coat, alongside a keychain, plushie, glass set, and more. The Soul Wall Fuwamoko also released their very first original song, Born to Be Bowdel. The Hall Live Production English Twitter account doing their jobs and actually announcing this, saying, let's shout bow. Get ready to wave those paws in the air and dance around to this super idle jam, and most importantly, bow bow. Fuwamoko's character illustrator providing this official illustration and also providing this illustration for Bunny Day. The twin demonic guard dogs going on to tweet out, Bow Bow, thank you for one year of letting us protect your smile. Continue working like demon dogs into our second year as members of Hall Live. These twins also soon to take part in Soul Popcon, performing as stage guests on Sunday, August 18th. Hall Live Production English also showing this behind the scenes artwork, stating they're idols now. Their 3D debuts are almost here. Hall Live staff member, Arasaki Nadoka remarking, beautiful belly. As also with Hall Live English, we have Nanashi Mume now announcing her birthday 3D Live. That event entitled Outside the Box and set for Sunday, August 4th at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. Also with Hall Live Production, we have Irani EO15 remarking that her 2024 birthday merch full set is sold out on both the Tokopedia and Hall Live shops. And if you still want the full set, you can go to Geek Jack. That birthday celebration merchandise including a tote bag, badge set, and more. As this weekend in Phoenix, we have Anime Impulse. Soon playing host to Hollow Stars English members of Armus, and with tickets now selling out for their meet and greets. Next up, we also have the Demon Queen of V Shoujo, Iron Mouse. Announcing, surprise, it's time for another game jam. I want to see more fun creations with Booby and me. Submissions are due by September 1st. I will play the top 20 on stream, and there will be prizes for the top 5. That being the Mouse Jam 2024 event, hosted on itch.io. That's all while Iron Mouse by way of streams 
charts have been listed as the most watched English-speaking VTuber by Hours Watched and followed by V Shoujo Zentreya. Zen earlier tweeting out, me and Baffler have cooked new 3D Dragon debut this week. Zen then making this incoming announcement, we are so back in 3D, promising a 3D debut this weekend. And remarking, back to the chaos again, baby. Little Wall Hound is here with happy partner anniversary and over 500,000 followers, Zentreya. Look at this tiny possessed doll of Zen. I hope you all like it. As we're all liking V Shoujo's Hanya the Genius. Now teaming up with Novel Horizons for a 1 7 scale figure. Novel Horizons here with Dio. In collaboration with V Shoujo and Henya the Genius, the 1 7 scale Henya the Genius prototype. Not a 3D render. Make sure to get her before it's too late. As today, we even have V Shoujo's Hime Hajime throwing out some eyes on these feet. And that's not all as we have Mythos HQ announcing this breaking news. On top of our joint Mythos Discord, all the goddesses now have their own Discord servers. Even more news coming out of 3AM Talent offering up this surprise. 3AM is hosting a virtual meet and greet at San Japan for a bunch of our friends. One of those friends being Lena Lazar saying, surprise, my first virtual meet and greet. See you guys at San Japan with the beautiful 3AM ladies. This has, once again, Lena Lazar is promising a debut of her long in development live 2D version. That debut set for this Sunday, August 4th. As that is all for this episode, as always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below. Send in your VTuber news to our Discord, as we'll have more things VTubers say for you soon.